One of the first retirements announced earlier this season was for Xfinity veteran Michael Annette. While most people can agree that he is a nice guy, many disagree about his ability behind the wheel of a car. A large crowd in the NASCAR community believes the only reason he entered the cup level was thanks to his longtime partner, Pilot Flying J. Today we're going to take a look at Annette's career and find out how good or bad he actually was. The Iowa native's first experience in a stock car would come in the 2007 ARCA season where he would start out with a bang at his hometown track at Iowa, taking pole position in his debut race. He led the first four laps before losing it to future teammate Justin Allgaier and then spun in turn four on lap 34. He would rebound to finish third. Annette would follow this impressive debut by finishing 8th and 6th in the next two races at Nashville and Gateway, respectively. For his fourth start of the season, he would switch gears to Bill Davis's ARCA team, securing both Annette's and Davis's first win in the series. Bill Davis, who had only ran 10 races as an ARCA owner between 1999 and 2007, would bring Michael Annette back for five ARCA races in 2008, and this quickly proved to be a good decision. He won the season opening ARCA 200 at Daytona and followed this performance with an engine failure at Iowa, two top fives, and then another solid top 10 run. Although his ARCA schedule was done for the season at this point, Annette wasn't done yet. He sat at home through rest of May and most of June until Bill Davis brought him up to the Craftsman Truck Series for seven races. Bill Davis had almost led Mike Skinner to a championship in 2007, and Johnny Benson would go on to win the 2008 championship, so Annette was hopping into top-tier truck equipment. He would qualify the truck for Scott Speed at Texas, but didn't actually attempt a race until Milwaukee. There, Annette would start 14th and end up with an impressive 6th place finish. After an 11th place run at Memphis, Annette would almost shock the sport by finishing 2nd behind teammate Johnny Benson Jr. at Kentucky. Unfortunately, after this race, things would go pretty bad for Annette. Four straight finishes of 22nd or worse was not the way Michael would have wanted to end his stint with Bill Davis. Annette would sign with Jermaine Racing and enter one truck and one nationwide series race. He finished outside the top 10 in his lone truck start with Jermaine and crashed in his nationwide debut at Homestead on lap 134. The 2009 season wouldn't start very strong with only one top 15 in the first 13 races, an 11th place run at Texas. In the 14th race of the season, Jermaine Racing brought their best equipment. In the seven races leading up to Kentucky, Annette had four starts of 29th or worst with a best start of 20th. In Kentucky, Annette wheeled his car to the outside of row two and brought home his first top 10 finish in 7th. Come season's end, Annette accumulated three more top 10 finishes with an average start of 26.5 and an average finish of 20.5. Annette would return to Germain for the 2010 season and would get off to a much better start. After the first five races, Annette sat pretty in 10th in the standing despite transmission issues at Las Vegas and even brought home a top 10 in Nashville. However, it would take him 16 races to score another top 10, which was Iowa, and would finish the season with only those two top 10s. Annette finished the season with a 26.6 average start and a slightly improved 19.7 average finish. He finished 13th in points, only ahead of four others who completed the full season. Annette would get a boost in equipment for his third full-time season after he signed with Rusty Wallace Racing, who had 21 top 10s between their two drivers, Brandon God and Steve Wallace. A common theme in Annette's career so far, he got off to a slow start recording no top 10s in the first 13 races, however this would change dramatically in the next 6 races, scoring 5 top 10 finishes. After this impressive stretch, Annette fell back slightly to similar form and recorded only 2 more top 10s. Once again, Annette's average finish slightly improved to a 16.4. So now we're 3 years into his Xfinity career and not a single top 5 recorded. Annette's career had been a bit disappointing to say the least after the hot start in the truck series, even though it was obvious that he didn't have the equipment to compete for wins. All excuses were out the door for 2012 when Annette would sign for Richard Petty Motorsports. In the team's first ever start in Nationwide, they won with Marcos Ambrose in 2011. Annette's speed was clear, competing for top 10s every week with three in the first seven races. Annette's speed was clear, competing for top 10s every week with three in the first seven races, but performance would dip until a stretch of six races mid-season. In these six races, Annette finished 4th, 3rd, 11th, 5th, 6th, and 4th. By season's end, Annette had collected 6 top 5s and 17 top 10s. 
This was by far his best season, but the next season was a bit disappointing, recording only one top 5 and four top 10s in 25 races. Annette missed eight races due to a hard crash he suffered in the season opening race at Daytona, and further evaluation showed that Annette had dislocated and fractured his sternum, requiring surgery. However, some positive news came his way, and it was announced that Annette would finally get his chance in the Cup Series, although some would say that he didn't earn it. He raced the full 36 race season with Tommy Baldwin racing, and as you could imagine, he had little to no expectations considering the quality of equipment, but he did outperform what J.J. Yaley managed to do in the previous year, managing a better average starting spot and finishing position, which is really all you can ask out of a rookie. Unfortunately, Annette was replaced by Alex Bowman at the end of the year and headed off to H. Scott Motorsports. Annette endured a miserable season, finishing even worse in points than he did at Tommy Baldwin Racing, in 36th and had a 32.8 average finish. Teammate Justin Allgaier finished 30th in points, 6 places better than Annette, and had a much better 27.7 average finish. Despite this terrible run, Annette was brought back for the 2015 season. Once again, Annette endured a dreadful season, finishing 36 in the points again with a 31.7 average finish. His teammate Clint Boyer managed 9 places higher than him in points in 27th with a 23.6 average finish. After the 2016 season, Annette dropped back into the Nationwide Series with Junior Motorsports. 2017 was not a very strong season to say the least. Annette finished the season 9th in points with 1 top 5s and 7 top 10s. He did beat Brennan Gaughan in RCR equipment and points, but also finished behind Ryan Reed and Matt Tift. Also teammates Justin Allgaier, Elliot Sadler, and William Byron did better. Like, much better. Byron won the championship and had 4 wins, while Allgaier finished 3rd in points and had 2 wins. Sadler did not have a win, but finished 2nd in the championship and had 25 top 10s. 2018 somehow managed to get worse for Annette. First, let's look at his teammates. While they managed a combined 38 top 5s, Michael Annette managed 3. 3 top 10s. A putrid 14th in points behind John Hunter Nemechek who only started 18 races, and whoever Shane Lee is managed the same number of top 10s in only 11 starts. Luckily, 2019 was a great change of pace, and Annette managed to rack up 19 top 10s, 6 top 5s, and even his first career win. He managed a 10th place average finish, by far a new career high. Although he wasn't able to get a win in 2020, he managed 22 top 10s and 4 top 5s. His 22 top 10s were tied for 4th most in the series. So, I'm not going to judge this 2021 season too harshly considering he was dealing with a foot injury most of the season, but I mean, hey, he still managed 10 top 10s in 26 races, which isn't a bad season. It's not terrible, uh, but it's definitely a little off from his previous two years with Junior Motorsports. And this will be Annette's last season in NASCAR. So, what do we really make of Annette's career? Well, Michael was a good enough driver to stick around for a large part of his career. Oddly, he seemed to peak at the beginning and the end of his career, while everything in the middle was pretty subpar or rough. His stint in Cup was bad, but he was on really bad teams, so you can't really hold too much against him, even though his teammates were outperforming him pretty much every year. Even if given a golden opportunity, I don't think Annette would have made it in the Cup Series, but he was a pretty serviceable Xfinity Series driver. I cannot gloss over how dismal his return to the Xfinity Series was for the first two years. I think it goes without saying that the only reason he was retained was because of his funding. However, something did click in 2019, and Annette was consistently a top 10 threat until his retirement. Without his foot injury, we may have seen Annette consider racing for four to five more years, and given his improvement, I think we may have seen him compete for more wins. At the very least, he would have been a consistent top 10 threat like he was the past few seasons. It sucks for Annette that it all seemed to fall apart once he figured something out, but once again, I don't think he would have ever made it to the peak at the end of his career if it wasn't for sponsorship. Overall, Annette finished his Xfinity career with 321 starts, one win, 19 top fives, and 95 top tens.
So guys, I hope you did enjoy that video. I know it was a long one looking through Michael Nett's career. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Was he good? Was he bad? Am I being too hard on him? Am I being too light on him? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. And if you did enjoy that video, hit that like button and make sure you click that subscribe button. I will see you guys in the next video. He's Peace. blocking. Here is the checkered flag. Michael Annette, first career victory. It comes at Daytona. <laughs> How about that? Nothing like your first win. No, there isn't. An ex Series, this is amazing. Uh, I couldn't do it without these guys. They've uh, they've stuck with me through the hard times when everybody counts us out, wonders why uh, why I'm get to drive this car and and I think we showed it today. They just they worked their tails off on this American Heart Association Pilot Flying J1 car. We got the one in, in Victory Lane. Our, our slogan this year is one team, one dream, one goal. Uh, this was one of them, so we're starting off good.